One of the science projects that I think is particularly interesting here and, and particularly enabled by the four-month stay that covers from winter to summer is tracking the response of permafrost from the hard frozen state of winter to the state of summer where it's melted, thawed, and quite active. This year was a particularly good year for that study because summer has been particularly warm this year. This has been one of the warmest summers on Devon Island in the last decade. And so we, we have data that shows the physical and biological response of the permafrost as it goes through this temperature transition, starting off at temperatures well below even the eutectic point of sodium chloride, going through that benchmark in which salt solutions start moving, then warming up to the point where water, pure water, would, would melt, and then finally getting up to high enough temperatures that microbial activity is really in full swing. And so with that data, we hope to be able to get a quantitative understanding of how the permafrost responds to temperature. And with that, we can extrapolate to Mars and look at how, on a colder world, permafrost would respond. We can also extrapolate to what would happen if the Earth got warmer and warmer, if the summer conditions were longer and more extensive than we have now. So I think that's a, a very interesting research angle, and I think it will uh, generate some very interesting results. The, the main reason I started working in polar regions was because of the connection of polar deserts to Mars. Cold, dry places, Mars, let's go investigate them. Well, that was 20 years ago. What we've learned is that polar regions are very important also for Earth. And over those 20 years as we've been collecting data, we've been finding that our results are relevant not only to Mars, but also relevant to understanding Earth. And so, in, in fact, the science objectives that the Mars crew are focusing on this year, while they're directly relevant to understand permafrost on Mars, they also help us understand the response of permafrost to global warming on Earth. And this is very important because permafrost could be a potentially important source of methane and CO2 as the world gets warmer. Regardless of the cause, the Earth is clearly getting warmer, permafrost in the Arctic regions are responding, and the kind of research that the crew is doing here will help us quantify that response. And so they're contributing in an important way to global ecology on Earth as well as understanding Mars. Well, from my perspective, the FMARS expedition has been a success in many ways. I think it's been a success scientifically, it's been a success programmatically for the Mars Society in that it's gone smoothly, safely. Our interaction with uh, other agencies involved, NASA, CSA, Polar Continental Shelf Project, have all worked very well, established a very good precedent. Uh, it's also, I think, generated important new insight into issues related to human exploration of Mars. So how we go forward, I think, is something that we will discuss as a society together with the crew and with other interested people at the convention in the end of August. Uh, one option would be to do another one next year. Another option might be to take a year off, focus on getting better prepared, rebuilding the HAB, uh, getting the equipment together, and then doing it the following year. I personally think that it's, uh, it's worked out well and we ought to consider seriously the option of doing them again. My sense is, is that, that a four-month expedition is such a uh, difficult planning exercise that we might want to pace it so that we're doing it every other year and interlace between that smaller crews that come up for two weeks that are focused on engineering upgrades to the HAP. Well, I, I hope that this experience for the crew has been useful for them, both personally in terms of uh, realizing their ambitions to be involved in space exploration, but also academically in that the science that they've done here, the research that they've done here, should be publishable. They should be first author on papers that report the results here, and hopefully that will be payoff for an investment of four months of time, which is basically a semester. They're basically spending a semester on Mars, it's sort of like a semester abroad, but here it's uh, on another planet. And from an academic and career point of view, they need to have something to show for that semester, and I, th I think the results they've gotten here are suitable and, and will be uh, a benefit to them in that academic uh, career building sense. In terms of Mars exploration, human exploration is still quite some time away, and the, near, the next missions will be robotic. The mission that will launch in August 2009 
2007 Phoenix mission will go to the polar regions and dig down into the permafrost. In that sense, it is doing similar work than the crew is doing here on Devon Island. Following that will be a Mars Science Laboratory rover, and then the missions that are after that are still undefined, but there's a big push right now for sample return, where we bring a sample back to Earth for study. Uh, I, I think that's an important mission, and I think that will be an important precursor for human exploration. We just had a report yesterday of a polar bear in the vicinity of the HAB, so if we don't hear anything more from the crew, we know what happened to them. <laughs> they were a polar bear dinner. Uh, but hopefully they're well prepared, well armed, and on the lookout for bears, so it uh, should be okay. It's interesting that polar bears are an endangered species, uh, so we want to avoid hurting them, but nonetheless they're dangerous. They're, I think they're the only bear that actively hunts uh, humans. Uh, I guess because our uh, humans are not that different from seals in terms of size and shape, uh, which is the bear's natural food. So final warning to the crew is watch for bears. <laughs>